Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So the video you're about to see is a module from one of my Spring Online courses covering Spring Core. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and a lot of good content in here. And if you like what you see, please head over to my website, springframework.guru, and you can learn more about my courses there. Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. Today we're going to take a look at setting up a password encoder service for Spring Security. We're going to use this in conjunction with uh, what we've already set up. We uh, previously started encoding the passwords when we were saving it to the database, and we used a, a library called JSIP to do the, the password encryption. And what it's doing in the background, it's doing a, what's called a unidirectional en encryption. So it'll take in a string and encrypt it, but we don't have any functionality to decrypt it. We have an implementation that will take in another string value, encrypt it, and see if it matches the encrypted value. So there's no way for us to decrypt or do a bi-directional encryption. We're only doing an encryption and seeing if the encrypted values match. And the JavaScript stuff does provide an implementation that we can use with Spring Security, and we need to set that up so we can plug it in. It's re really kind of plug and play for Spring Security. And so we're going to set that up in, in this module. We need to add a, a Maven dependency and then set up a, a password encoder bean for Spring Security. So let's uh, go take a look at that now. Okay, first thing we want to do, let's take a look at the Maven Palm where I added in the requirement and the dependency for it. So we have this JSIP uh, group ID and it's a Spring Security, so it's a separate jar. And fortunately, this is supposed to be working with Spring Security 3. There's no implementation for Spring Security 4. We are using Spring Security 4 in this project, but fortunately it looks like this one is uh, backwards compatible or forwards compatible with Spring Security. Now the next thing we need to do is set up the actual password encoder object. And if you remember, we set up our Spring Security config and I'm going to continue using that. So I've defined a new bean and it implements the password encoder interface, which is a, a Spring Security interface and it takes in the strong encryptor and if you remember we set this up previously and this is the JSIP stuff and we have a strong encryptor being that we're using in our our user service to encrypt the password and we take in that same implementation that we set up before but now we're in the spring security and on line 19 this is where we're, we're taking in that strong encryptor you can see in the java configuration i'm just calling for that bean and spring when it's configuring this will know that it it's going to take in that other other bean that we set up in the other configuration file and inject it into this bean to create our, our password encoder. And let's take a, a quick look at what this guy does. So this does does the implementation. And let's see here. So here's the unidirectional validation. So we can see that it's taking in an encoded password, a raw password. And this will take in a salt, which we're not using, use a salt value, but it will use the encryptor to check if the password is valid or not. And again, this, this up here, we can see that it implements an interface. I'll take a quick look at that. And this is a spring security interface. It looks like I deprecated it. So at some point we'll, we'll need to change this, but it is currently working with spring security for in a future release of Spring Security, this could get dropped, so we might have to change in the future, but for now, we're okay. This concludes the module on configuring the password encoder for using it with Spring Security. So just to recap, we had to bring in an additional Maven dependency, which gave us a library for the JSIP stuff to use with Spring Security. And then we took our existing being that did the encryption and configured the interface for use with Spring Security. Now we're set to, all set to move forward with configuring Spring Security and using this encryption library that we have. Yeah.